Hi, and welcome back. It's uh, we're moving along on our Sherman base in, in um, Normandy. And one of the things I'm going to talk about this morning is um, painting the bricks for our little gatehouse or our, our gate itself here in the corner of our little diorama. Um, brick color is uh, I quite often go to game color in the Vallejo line for brick colors. I also jump the line and I go to the Tamiya stuff. I always do it in acrylic uh, paint, but um, that's only because sometimes I put a, a MIG or a AK wash on top of the bricks and I don't want the thinner to um, challenge each other. So I don't want to be start taking off the brick color while using the MIG washes. Um, being an enamel wash, on top of these bricks, um, it's not going to interfere whatsoever with the acrylic wash that's that's on the, the acrylic brick color that's underneath here. But um, bricks, as you guys all know, come in many many colors. So the only thing is to stay consistent with the project that you're working on. You obviously can't, um, you know, you can't change up the colors. In other words, these two pillars in the end are always going to be the same style brick. They come from the same brickyard and um, sure there's going to be a dark brick and a light brick but individually scattered amongst the bricks but in general all the bricks for a certain project should should be the same color now if you if you switch off and you're going to do a I mean you can't do six dioramas and have every single stone wall you're going to do or brick wall um, the same shade only on the same diorama is it necessary to have them the same color so you're you're just gonna if you don't do that you're gonna be bored out of your mind painting all your bricks for six different projects the same paint jar so get familiar with these colors and then switch them up every project like for instance Dave's and my Normandy project these are the colors chosen but you want to do Stalingrad or you want to do uh, another theater of war, just switch the tone up slightly. Just so that when you have them on display in your, um, in your um, showcase at home, it, they just don't all look identical. It, 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 it just isn't pleasing to the eye. Um, you got a green tank and a red wall and pretty soon you do that four or five times, pretty soon all your dioramas flow together. So you don't want to do that. So get familiar with brick colors. Um, if you have to, go into the train colors even. I mean, train colors have concrete and barn red and, 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 and all that sort of stuff. Cheat and go over to the model railroading um, and it's easy to pick up model railroader and see the color of bricks that they use. And you'd be surprised, they they will use an entirely different um, palette of colors than, than we use here in 35th scale. And um, don't hesitate to, to jump the line and go over there and steal from some of their colors because model railroaders, I mean, they, they, they've been doing this a long time. They know what they're up to as far as um, colors on buildings and what have you. They do it a lot more than, than we do in 35th scale. They have entire train layouts covered in uh, different colored bricks, uh, brick buildings, but somehow they all pull together and they look terrific. So, so don't hesitate to go over and pick up a model railroader at your local hobby shop and pick up an article on, you know, painting brick or stone or that sort of thing. Those model railroaders are a great help to, to what we do here in 35th scale. So, um, so once again, I, I'm going to paint this little piece here with a, a game color Vallejo number 72066. And I, and I, it's an acrylic paint, as you guys know, and I'm going to hand brush them. I, I very seldom do I ever um, airbrush brick. I just need a, a very solid, firm color. And um, as you guys know, uh, when you airbrush things, it's quite often 50% thinner and you can really scrub on bricks like this. You don't have to, you know, you can push down and really 
you know, abuse these hydrocal bricks. So 50% 50, 50 thinner um, and airbrushing. Sometimes when you're handling them, they can rub off with the hydrocal. So I always hand paint them. And um, when it comes to weathering, though, across these top little pieces here, I might bring out my airbrush and just give them a little bit of a, a mist of buff or to me a buff. And also, too, if you look at any sort of building that's been there a long, long time, there's always um, a little mist along the bottom. That's dirt grime and it's vegetation, you know, deterioration and what have you, plants dying, wind blowing, stones banging into them in a combat scene. So don't hesitate to, once you're finished, your nice uh, brickwork to dig out your airbrush and then just mist on a little bit of road grime close to the bottom in scale, probably the last, oh, 10 inches or so on the bottom of the bricks. All right, so I'm gonna, um, I've already poured the glue, uh, the paint out, and I'm just gonna apply it to this little brick. Here and then. All right, so I'm just gonna paint these bricks, and then in a minute I'm gonna put some uh, brick mortar in between. Some concrete in between all the bricks. And to get little different tones, because no, all the bricks aren't the same color. So just with a little bit of water, you can thin down here and there. Of course, it's made with white hydrocal. So here and there, there's always some white filling to do. And the they can't flood it with water. I just use the water to fill in the cracks. Simply because it is hydrocal, it will soften the water. You'll lose some of the detail. Now these Barbican brick sets are pretty firm. The hydrocal used here is pretty tough, but nevertheless, water can affect it. If, if you flood it with water, you'll lose the great detail. Okay, so after I've uh, painted it with the uh, with the tan color, the game color tan, then I'm going to take Vallejo uh, seventy three one one three light slate gray, and this is going to be my cement, my brick mortar, and I just I just get it on there, jam it into the cracks. And just put it on Lucy. Don't worry about it falling out. It's not going to fall out in the end when I put my next um, technique to it. But you got to get it down in that uh, in the crevices. And and Vallejo has a few uh, light colors that you can use instead of the one I'm using. I, I've chosen that in the past and I've liked it. Just take your thumb. Push it down. So I'm pushing on these bricks here. Then we can get a little more on. And then just, um, just take your finger put a little water on just put it on the surface and there you go and if and if you pull too much out with that process just the nice thing is you can put it back in again but it's going to really hang on there So let me go around the uh, the post, the, the gate post, and I'll go around to that, and then I'll show you the next technique, which will be to, once again, airbrush. Now, there's a reason why the top is not painted, because it's my handle for holding on to it while I apply these things. 
If I painted this, my fingers would, and oil on the fingers would take all the paint off of the top here. So leave this unpainted till the end. But you can see how you can very easily manipulate it by not um, painting it top and bottom. So anyway, let me um, go around the thing and um, then we'll come back and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll scratch some bricks with another color, darken it up here and there, and then, um, and then we'll airbrush a little bit of dirt grime on the bottom. So let me finish off doing that and then we'll okay, come right so I'm back. I'm also gonna change up some of the colors in the bricks. Just not too much, but bricks aren't exact. They come out of the kiln a little color different than another. So just randomly pick a brick. All right, so just uh, just switch it up a little bit. And in this case, I just used uh, NATO brown and German gray. Just mix the two together to give it just a little different feeling. Just remember when you're doing this sort of stuff and you have two columns involved, um, make sure that your palette stays the same. So so keep it marked somehow so that um, if you do one brick column this week and one the next week, you know exactly the colors that you used because you don't want them to be, you don't want them to be different. So... But that's enough. That's I'll, I'll go around and do this other side at a later thing. We won't use the camera on that, but then your little stone wall is starting to take a little bit of shape. We're starting to get down to the... And now these bricks at the moment stick way out. You know, that's not how they, they will end up, but at the moment, obviously, they, um, they stick out a lot. But um, once we start to weather this, and we're going to put a vine on it and a, and a, a creeper on it, um, paint the, the top. It's going to look great. So just bear with us. And uh, I'm going to set up the airbrush, spray our little vine, uh, a brownish gray color. And uh, I'll show that in a second. Okay, so as you know, these some of these bricks are loud. Just give them a, a dusting of our brick mortar. And you can see that they're all blended. There's nothing worse, guys, than not blending them back into the, you know, to the thing that we're working on. If you don't give them a nice little blend, you know, the, the brick walls just stick out and they're mad. All these individual bricks now look uniform and, and part of the column. A minute ago, they looked like I put the brand new bricks in. So you gotta blend them all in and then you want to set the Vallejo brick mortar into the model. So the way I do that is the following. I take a little eyedropper, a little bit of X20. That's the Tamiya thinner. And that's how I hold on to the pigments. And I just, I'm about a sixteenth of an inch above. Just let it, it's got a mind of its own. It's just going to follow the cracks. And this is, this is the adhesive for the, for the brick mortar. It's not going to wash out. You're going to wake up tomorrow morning and it's going to be all back to the, the way you left it once this stuff dries. You can see it's... Now 
Now to speed up, I'm just going to apply the hair dryer to it. I'm just going to let it set in a little bit because the hair, I don't want the hair dryer blowing off any of the stuff, any of the pigments. So just let it sit for a couple minutes, put your hair dryer on it, and then, um, you know, it'll be ready for a, a few more things. We're going to add some vines and, and things to it. And we'll paint the top, and um, yeah, it's gonna look fine. So, and then we'll apply it to our okay, little. So one. another added um, bit of the brick color, uh, burn umber, seventy three one one zero for Vallejo, and I just put it in the tray, put a little bit on my finger, and I'm just gonna rub a little bit. It's just gonna alter the brick tops a little bit, and again, this is. There's a little bit too much there. But again, it just adds a little bit of texture to your model. Don't worry that it's gotten in the cracks. You can just brush it out. Don't forget the uh, X20 has now put the gray mortar in there for good. So, but it just adds a little more body to your and texture. We're always talking about layering and layering and layering. But this column is now looking to be 50 years old now. So that's what you want to accomplish. So just and if you mess up and screw up, don't worry about it. Just take out your your first color, uh, tan, and just paint over the whole thing again and start again. Don't try to take it off with water. You're going to lose the detail. Like These are very sharp 35th um, scale bricks. And, you, and if you start fooling around with water and thinner, you're going to lose the detail. So just take your tan and, and a little bit of water. Like I'm talking 5% water. And just give it a wash again and start again if you if you feel you've blown it but it's hard to make a mistake on these things but like i say another little bit of texture on here with this new color this burn umber is a great little addition so like i say pretty soon you're looking at a a 50 year old column here so just keep going i'm gonna just add the, the light brick mortar where I've missed and then we'll put some vines on it and keep in mind this is going on a vignette that's in Normandy in June or July of 44 so the vegetation on the uh, on the vines is going to be bright green and um, what I like to use for the vines are roots from the from the garden and you can get a collection of roots like so which are going to last you a long 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 time anyone that lives in the vicinity of Hornet Hobbies can come by um, this pile of roots will be here for the next little while I'm sure but anyway these are roots from cedar trees I think but roots are the best and, and once again going back to model railroading they have been using roots for trees, I think, since probably the 40s. The, the, uh, the model railroaders have, have, have been at this a lot longer than we have. So, like I say, use the roots um, in the spring of the year. So, in other words, we're only, we're only in October right now. But in the spring of the year, so many people are up turning over their gardens. And you're going to see a pile of roots at a roadside for the cleanup guy to come and take away from the house go by in the cover of darkness <laughs> grab a pile of roots but anyway so what I'll do is I'm just gonna airbrush the roots a little bit of uh, color a little bit of brown and gray give them some color and then I'll uh, attach some leaves to them and then um, and then glue them onto our little okay, column. So now I'm, I'm gonna uh, paint a, a few vines um, now they they look fine at the moment 
right the way they are right I clipped right off the branches of the roots they look okay but if you add a little bit of color and in this case I'm gonna add up add some Tamiya XF 68 and XF 77 a mix of uh, almost 50 50 and you're gonna get a nice uh, sort of brown color like like so and uh, so these obviously are alive branches they're not you know deteriorating they're not it's not dead wood or anything like that driftwood kind of color these are uh, active plants so let's just give them a little spray this will also add a little life uh, longevity to them as well as far as this plants used in mauling form sometimes after a, a year or so can go up in smoke so just give them a little spray your favorite ones We'll add a few leaves on I'll just do one more then I'm gonna white glue the the branches on and the twigs and I'll show you how to do that woodland scenics bushes and what have you but anyway we're gonna take our call now actually what I'm gonna do I've painted the concrete top but I should just mist on just a little bit of color just right now it looks like it's painted with Tamiya paints period full stop so I'm gonna spray it suddenly with uh, about 85% thinner and that same vine sort of brown color. This is just the sort of grime that would naturally happen to a column that would be out in the out in nature for 50 years. There's a lot of thinner in my brownish color. Underneath the ball, you might want to put in a little extra shadow, but it just gives it that dirty kind of look. And then, and then if you've gone too dark with the color, don't worry, just bring it back with a little bit of light color. So, and then as we progress along in the next video or so, once we start adding on all the groundwork colors, and the vines and stuff we may take a little bit of khaki number 49 to Mia and just mist it on a second time but right now let's just attach the vines that's a great looking tree I think we'll use that as a tree in our little vignette over here so we'll keep that one but all you have to do is just white glue these onto our little model here so I'll go get some white glue and nail these down. And, and these are going to have to sit for a minute or a little while, actually. They're going to have to sit all day until the glue dries. So it'll be the last thing we do on this particular showing. So let me get the uh, the tight bond and I'll anchor it into the, into the um, column. Okay, so what I've done is I've actually changed my mind. I'm not going to use tight bond on this. I'll use a little bit of uh, uh, CA glue. Just gonna put a little dab down the bottom and don't worry that this is suddenly gonna come up glossy because the reality is it is gonna come up glossy but that'll be instantly fixed. Just anchor it down a little bit and don't worry about the extension here. I'm just gonna nip that off with my uh, with my tweezers.
I get this one weaving around. I mean, it is, after all, nearly Halloween, so let's make it a scary branch. So it looks like so. Just let that glue set for a minute. And don't worry at all about the gloss in the bottom. Because that's just going to be hidden away in a second with some pigments and stuff. So that's how it's going to sit on the diorama. And then I'm going to put some leaves on it. Once this thoroughly dries. Because putting the leaves on it and what have you. Are, it's going to take a little bit of moving around and stuff. So... Just make sure this is anchored properly. And then just once this dries with the CA glue, I'm just going to take my nippers, nip them off the bottom, and they'll be ready for our vignette. So one of the other things I'll do, and I'll show this on the next video, is putting the, and attaching the leaves, and you're basically... You know, there's so many leaf punches now on the market. You're going to pick your favorite ones and just, you're just going to place them around. And you're not going to have to place too many. But in any event, I'm going to let this sit now for a little bit to dry. And then um, we'll okay, be right so back. Okay, so one of the next steps will be to just add that little uh, base of everyday grime to the bottom. And the reason I'm doing this now is because once... I'm gonna also put grass and what have you. This beautiful static grass is all gonna be up and around here in the bottom. So I wanna get the paint on first. So just, and I have just to me a buff. I think the number is 57. And it's just gonna crawl up the bricks a little bit. Make sure you go all the way around. And of course this is loosey goosey on my base at the moment. So I could take it out and do it, but I want this color also to match the groundwork perfectly. So just go around. And like I say, this is just street grime and, and 50 years of vegetation growing up and falling off and winters. Normandy has a winter, a bit of snowfall. And then what I'm going to do is then add this grass technique to the bottom of this concrete. And as you can see, this is a very faint color. This is just, it's not going to change the color of your bricks. It's just going to add a little bit of dirt, but it's not going to take the red away. So just put that on. And as you can see, our vine is attached. And we, when we get together next time, we're going to... Like I say, put the leaves on it. I'll just put a little bit of color on the column. And uh, one of the other things I think that we should do is also put an address on these bricks. So I'll show how to put that on. It's no big deal to get the address on there. I just take sprue, um, Tamiya sprues or airplane sprues or whatever and just chisel off the numbers off the sprues, you know, there's piece number four, five, six, whatever. You just chisel those off with a chisel blade and then add the numbers, paint them appropriately, uh, probably uh, maybe a brass color or anyway, a dark iron color. And then just, we'll put an address on here. And all those little teeny little address type of things and, and you know, maybe a different little ground cover things. It depends on the exact position of the Sherman. So I'm not gonna suddenly add stuff without the Sherman being here, Dave's Sherman. So 
those things won't be added but certainly the the address label will be added and uh, and like I say um, next week we'll add the foliage to the to the vine and a few of these dead ones we'll add a few um, dead leaves to it and then uh, Dave Sherman's about to arrive we'll, we'll talk about the painting of the groundwork and the marriage between this road and the uh, and the setting in Normandy's you know field here so there'll, there'll be grass clumps along here of course and, and just study roads next to fields and you'll see you know use that as a reference point anyway thank you very much and we'll see you next week